Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay, can we start now? Oke. Okay. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asrofil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi rasulillahi ajmain amma ba'du. The Honorable Dr. Ani Susanti MPDBI as the head of English Education Department Universitas Ahmad Dahlan. The Honorable Dr. Datbau as the speaker today from Monash University Australia. The Honorable Miss Ika Suciwati SPD as the moderator of today's webinar. The Honorable all of the lecturer of English Education Department Universitas Ahmad Dahlan and the unforgettable all of the participants and committees whom I loved. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world, the King of the King, who makes everything in this universe, who has given us the mercies and blessings until we can meet together in this virtual room. And don't forget praying and greeting we send to our Prophet Muhammad SAW, who has brought us from the darkness to the path of the light. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aisyah Ril Surya as Master of Ceremony. I would like to say welcome to the webinar of visual pedagogy using cartoon in English language classroom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we are going to our agenda today, let me read the several agenda. First opening, main agenda, key and session, and also the last is closing. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first agenda is opening. Let's open Let's open our event today by reciting Basmalah together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for the first agenda is opening. And I hope all of the participants to make sure watch and listen carefully because there will be a quiz with interesting gift later. So now we have to come to the main agenda. Before that, let me introduce our moderator for today is Miss Ika Suciwati, who is alumni of English Education Department. She is one of the outstanding alumni of the Ahmad Dahlan University English Education. While, she, while studying here, Miss Ika received award in the academic field and also in the de debate community. You can see as uh, we show at the screen, you can read all of the awards that she get and also now she is one of a master of TESOL student at Monash University with a fully funded scholarship from the Australia government. Now she is currently running her own online educational platform called Your English Buddy and a commu community focusing on English debate proliferation in Bima West Nusa Tenggara known as Mbojo Debating Society. Okay? So now for Miss Ika, time is yours. Time is yours, Miss Ika. Thank you very much, Aisha, for the opportunity. Thank you so much. So um, um, today we will be having a talk using cartoon in English language classroom. Room. We have a very outstanding speaker, Dr. Datbao. He is a very well-known um, educator and also instructor in the English language teaching, not only in Indonesia, of course, but also at Monash. So here in Monash, um, Dr. Dad is everyone's favorite. He is very multi-talent in all of the schools, but later I will introduce uh, you in detail about Dr. Dad. But before that, let me um, greet some of my lecturers here, the Honorable Buani Susanti, uh, as the head of English Education Department. Thank you for the opportunity, the Honorable, um, all the lecturers. I have been missing you guys so much. We have uh, Pak Bambang here and also some other lecturers as well, and also all the audiences. Today, I will be the moderator for the talk, and we have a solo speaker, pa, uh, Dr. Dat Bao. So Dr. Dat, is a senior lecturer at Monash University. He has been working with Monash for over 15 years from 2007. He had graduated from Leeds Metropolitan University in the UK with a degree of Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Linguistics and Educational Psychology in 2002. And he also got his diploma in English Instruction, Language Testing and Assessment at Cambridge UK 
in 1996. Wow, I wasn't born yet. I think most of the audiences here haven't born yet, right? So throughout his career, he has been working with various big institutions in the world, including Leeds Beckett University in the UK, Cornell University in the US, the National University of Singapore or NUS, and also the Assumption University of Thailand. I have been to Assumption University in 2019, Dr. Dad, to join the World University Debating Championship representing my beloved university, Amadalan, and also Indonesia in general. So Dr. Dad expertise includes silent studies, curriculum design, intercultural communication, materials development, literacy development, creative pedagogy, visual pedagogy in language education. He is also a creative writer and artist with poems, short stories and illustrations arc, uh, illustration artworks published in Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong and mainland China. So during the class last semester, I remember Dr. Dad used his own illustrations as the media and I was surprised because it's so complex, but it was surprisingly made by himself. Um, he is the author of Outstanding Silence and Reticence, Nonverbal Participation in Second Language Acquisitions, Poetry for Education, Classroom Ideas that Inspire Creativity, Creativity and Innovations in ELP Materials Development, Looking Beyond the Current Designs, Transforming Pedagogy Through Engagement with Students, Teachers and Communities, and in total, he has more than 80 publications, and therefore, he is known as the superstar in the field of teaching and education. I think it's not exaggerating to say that Dr. Dad is it. So in 2018, Dr. Dad also received the Education Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching at Monash University. What um, outstanding uh, speaker he is going to be today. So I hope all the audiences can uh, really um, participate and also pay attention to the whole sessions because as Ma Aisha has already told you that we are going to have a question and answer sessions at the end and also door prize. So we will be giving 10 door prizes to the luckiest participants. But before going to Dr. Dad, maybe I should like have a little chit chat with him first. Hello, Dr. Dad. Good afternoon. Yes. Hello. Afternoon, Ika and everyone. Um, Good afternoon. I think like, uh, yeah, there are people from students from OMEA as well. Oh, that's, yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. I think some of my students, uh, sorry, some of my friends who currently study here are also participating in this webinar, oh, no. because when I share the poster, oh, isn't that Dr. Dad? He's mm -hmm. very good lecture that we have here at Monash, and they wonder whether they can join. And obviously, I say that, yeah, of course, you can join. So I send the link to them. So there are mm -hmm. a lot of participants that we have here. We have like more than 100 30 participants. So I guess everyone is very um, interested and also very exciting to hear from you, Dr. Dad, because it's a, I think in Indonesia, it's a brand new topic using cartoon in the English language teaching. So yeah, without further ado, I give the time for Dr. Dad to give the talk. Thank you very much, um, everyone. And thank you for Ika for making me look very good. Um, <laughs> now the expectation is very high. And I have to try my best to meet that. Yeah, you uh, you really make my life difficult, but thank you. <laughs> and I also love the music you play. Uh, we play, yeah, at the beginning. I remember every time we go to um, theater, waiting to watch a movie, they play music to build the mood for entertainment. That means you treat my talk as entertainment, which 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 is a good thing. Thank you so much for that. Um, I'm gonna share screen, and uh, we'll talk about this topic. I hope you can see this. Can you? Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, visual pedagogy, I add creating. Indeed, um, topic um, register with you, it was just using cartoon. But I realized that um, we teachers are not using cartoons, but we also are entitled to creating them. Um, so, Again, visual pedagogy, creating and using cartoons for the English language classroom. Um, that Bao Monash University and University of Amadalan allowed me to also say I belong to uh, Amadalan University for having been here so many times in my life. Um, I think my job is with Monash, but my heart is with Amadalan. 
Do you know why? <laughs> Because if your heart is in two places, that's not good. That means your heart is broken. So um, let me start by sharing a story with you happened at Monash with my students. One of my students, um, after I talked to him about pictures, he came up and asked me one day, he said, so do you think a picture is worth a thousand words like you say? I said, yeah, why? He said, if that's the case, then can I submit four pictures? I said, why? He said, because uh, we are required to write 4,000 word essay. Can I submit four pictures? I said, yes, you can. Then he thought for a moment and asked, but what kind of picture should I submit? Can I take from internet? No. Can I borrow pictures from a textbook? No. What should I do? You draw the picture yourself because if it's an essay, you write it by yourself. You don't pirate. So if it's a picture, four pictures, you have to draw them. Then he asked, what kind of content are the pictures? He said, The, the content of the essay, and he realized how difficult it is. So he went away and he said, can I come back? He said, yeah, go, go drink coffee and think. So he went away drinking coffee and thought for a moment. Then he came back, sir, yes. Can I ask your permission? Okay. Can I, can I write 4,000 words? Yeah. So I allow him to drop out 4,000 words. Um, the story means, it's a real story, yeah. It means pictures are not easy to create. We can, as teachers, we can steal a picture from a textbook. We can borrow a picture from the internet. We can download anything ready. But to create pictures takes a lot of work. It's not about, uh, it doesn't require knowledge. It doesn't require skill. Uh, this doesn't require much talent, but it requires love. You have to be someone with a lot of love for your students in order to sit there for hours drawing for them instead of reading books. So on that note, let me share with you a bit of a theory before I share ways of using picture. This is a framework that I recently um, put together from research. Um, and it covers more than just the use of pictures. It covers anything that you would like to do for creativity in tasks. Yeah, these are five, um, imagine five pillars uh, that, that will, will lay strong foundations for activity in the classroom, whether you use art, poetry, words, uh, drama, music, um, artwork, anything. Yeah. So these are the five things that we keep in mind. Number one, we need to have a focus. It has to have a focus of what to be learned because sometimes we chit chat a lot in the classroom, but students learn very little. So we make sure that no matter what we do, they, they will learn something meaningful, yeah, related to, um, in our case, language. So skills to be learned. And then it has to have multiple possibility. It allows different voices to come together. You know, when you have a question, you, you might like to allow different answers, not just one correct single answer. Yeah. Allow people to share different views and no one is correct, but everyone is right. And then it has to have meaningful content. And by any meaningful content, we mean something that can relate it relate to something that happens in the real world, something that they love, they enjoy, they do, um, they find meaning in life, they find use. After they step out of our classroom, they can use it. And the fourth thing is emotion. A lesson doesn't access your brain, only your student's brain. It has to be able to access your student's heart. They have to feel and not just think. And finally, you ensure learnability. The, the lesson is easy to learn. If a lesson is too difficult, it doesn't mean that's an advanced lesson. It means the lesson is stupid. It's just too hard. Who can learn it? Yeah. So I think a, a, a smart person is someone who makes everything easy for students. So they can learn at ease and they can learn with enjoyment. Um, so these five things actually come from research. Um, Um, due to the time limit, I won't be able to present research, but save them for another occasion. Uh, this is just the first big picture. And then a bit of history. Uh, feel free to interrupt me anytime to ask questions. 
now the use of visuals have have been around for several hundred years when when humans started to learn not just living language but language like Greek and Latin. Um, earlier docu doc documentation of the use of visuals have been found in even early 19th century when people started to learn words from another language. These are real um, cards that teachers back in the old time used to teach vocabulary. And this is what the classroom looked like. Yeah, even before we had photographs. So this is an old uh, drawing of the classroom, language classroom in the old time. The teacher would show images and student would volunteer to say the words in the language. However, back then, um, Pictures were only used for vocabulary teaching mainly. There were no communication. What we're doing today is we'll be talking about creating visual for communication. How can we do that? Let me introduce um, maybe some questions first, yeah. Maybe you can quickly respond so we have a bit of a conversation. <clears throat> Why do you think learning should contain visuals? I'm sure each of you as teachers have um, frequently used visual, but let's think about why we need them. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. So it's an open question from Dr. Dad to the audiences. Feel free to raise hand uh, and participate in the discussion. Or as a learner, why do you like pictures in the lesson? Or you can type and I will read either way. Yeah, speaking. Yeah, we as have as Azam as here, Dr. Dutch, who raised yes. his hand. Hello, yes. Azam, can you please? Yeah, yes, Azam, I'm please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hello, Dr. Dutch. Dr. Dutch. Yes, hello, Azam. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Yes, I think uh, we're using visual to, you know, it's, it's, it, make, it makes class more like fun and uh, we're learners. Uh, it's, I think it's more easy to understand what uh, the lecturers uh, deliver, you want to deliver. So I think it's, it's yeah, it's, it, it, it makes class more fun and it's easy to understand what mm -hmm. lecturers try to uh, deliver. Yeah, I agree yes. with you, Optimism. Uh, yep, it affects feeling. It, it builds a good mood and it assists comprehension. Any other thoughts? Or you can respond to the next questions as well. Why do we teachers need to create visual resources? And I like to emphasize on the word create. We make it by ourselves instead of getting pictures from internet. And not just teacher, but sometimes I know teachers who ask students to bring pictures in to the classroom for sharing and learning. Sometimes photographs of their family, just to talk about family relationship, activities, hobbies. Um, yeah, we have Torik yeah. here. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, visual is like uh, one of the way which like uh, make the idea, make the students uh, uh, get the idea easily and it will uh, make them focus. This uh, visual like will attract uh, students during the class. Mm -hmm. Thank yep, yep. Thank you, Derek. That's a good reason. Yeah, attraction. We, kept, we capture attention and arouse curiosity. And if pictures come from the teachers, pictures come from the teacher thems him themselves. Uh, it means the teacher care about students enough to make effort to, to connect with, with students. That's, that's one important reason. Um, I'm gonna share with you some insights that I learned from research. Um, my participants say picture, if um, created by teachers themselves, they have relevance, yeah instead of um, trying to look for something that may be temporary. Um, 
it would be more relevant, directly relevant. Relevant to what? To what you are looking for, to what you want, to what who your students are, to the content of what you're teaching, to the lesson being taught, to the requirement of the lesson, all the things that you know about your lesson. If you turn that into some visual mediums, um, it will access your students' learning ability very quickly. Um, one thing I share with you, because sometimes I ask people, I ask teachers yeah, at workshop, can you draw for your student? They all say, no, no, we don't draw, we can't draw. So I thought actually drawing is very easy. You can learn it very quickly. Within 20 minutes, you, you can be an artist. They said, really? How do you do that? So I would like you to try this with me. I'd like to guide you to a process and I'd like you to maybe have a pen and some paper ready to draw. Yeah, I will show you how I draw a character and you just copy me or you can, you can improvise further. Let me see if I uh, can blow this up. Yeah, so let's get started. Uh, I like you to draw a boy and a girl. Yeah. So you can choose any facial shapes you see here. They don't have to be accurate or beautiful. They can be anything as long as it's a bit of a circle. Yeah. It can be round, oblong, square, pear shape, triangle, or even irregular. So draw for me now. Maybe later you can show your picture to me on the screen. Yeah, you can. If you um, do it in your notebook, you can show it like this because I love to see your drawing and we can take a picture of all the drawings in the end. So two circles, yeah. One for a boy and one for a girl. Uh, you can even draw a headscarf, yeah, if you like, yeah. Um, I'm going to show you the next step. Eyes coming from top, as you can see. And then nose dropping down from between the eyes. And then mouth. After that, um, maybe some hair or head or scarf. Yeah, anything you like. Then the body. The body is a repetition of the facial shape. So if the face is round, the body is round too, etc. Et um, if possible, make the body small, yeah. half the size of the face. And then arms and legs stretching out from the body with shoes and fingers like this. Hope you can follow, yeah. So, you can do that, but I'm going to show you different ways so you can continue to modify what you're doing now. Another way is to allow characters to look to each other as if they're having a conversation or a debate or an argument with some facial expression as well, instead of just staying calm. And then allow the body of your characters to do something. For example, sitting, walking, running, and the hand movements. Yep, like this. A third option, if you like to modify, yeah, if you are using a pencil that's easy to rub off this and that and continue to modify, allow two characters to interact like this. Can I ask you, looking at these two faces, what do you think the characters are doing? Anyone? Are they teaching and learning? Do they look like teaching and learning, yeah. Uh, they look like they, they, they have the competition. Yes, a kind of competition, like fighting, which is right, yeah, correct. They're fighting. Let me ask you to guess some more. What do you think this lady is doing? Walking, maybe? Walking, yeah. Any other guess? Watching someone in love. Watching yeah. 
Yeah, that's right. So they are expressing love, yeah. And then imagine, yeah, hugging each other. And someone is angry. Yeah, he doesn't allow that to happen. And he might get into a fight with this man, but people who pass by are worried. So they don't want to see what happens. So I hope you finish your picture. One other thing you can do is you scan your picture or take a photo and then you put on the app called App Painting and you can put color into your picture like what I did here. Have a look. Yeah. Very quick. I just pick color and put it to my characters. Um, someone put something in the chat box. Let me see. Yep, someone say nice seeing me. Thank you. Nice seeing you too. Um, when you finish your picture, I think I would love to see it. So if you don't mind, maybe um, show your picture on the screen or something. We can we can take a snapshot for good memory. I stop sharing for a second. So you can do that if you like. It will be a good opportunity to have a really fun picture of everyone's drawing. You don't have to show your face or anything. Just put up here and then turn the camera on. And then uh, um, Bu Ika will take um, the picture. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll use that for teaching and learning. So we give you one minute to prepare. Yeah. After um, Ika say, ready, uh, take the photo and then we all show our drawing. Yeah. Yes. So you can show us the result. It's going to be fun. Hmm. Even one character is okay. See yeah. what you draw, yeah? Just put up and wait for us to take a picture. Wait for everyone to, yeah. to have something to share, yeah. I'm also drawing mine. Yeah, oh, good. Keep it, keep it on, yeah? Keep the picture on, I think. Ika will we'll wait and then we'll take a picture. I think we might need to like, take several pictures. Can wow, you see? We can yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we get ready, everyone. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. yeah I can see. Maybe there. Yeah. More, more, please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you, everyone. That's lovely. If we have everyone's picture, there will be a poster. Yeah. Should you this poster for teaching? Yes. Pak Bambang also draws. See, eh? he said good example. Yeah. Bye. Wait. Oh. <laughs> Where's uh, pa, a, Abu Ani? <laughs> yes. Almost, yeah, almost half already. Thank you, thank you. Keep doing it, everyone. Draw quickly. One face is okay. I can see Papu, Papu Diary. Diary. Yeah, Papu Diary. Hold the picture higher, Papu Diary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good, good. Oh, excellent. I will use this image for my student and say, everyone in Yogyakarta can draw. You are in Australia. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. 
Azim, where are you? Indri? Yeah, almost oh, more and more coming. Thank you. Yes, almost there. We'll have to take a few pictures because um, have to move um, the screen, yeah, so that we can see everyone. Yeah, be patient with us. This is the only chance that we can do something fun like this. I've never done this before, you know, asking for picture from the audience. Yes. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I can see iPad from Ika. Ika, did you take the picture? Yeah, I took some, but I think oh. I'm going to take more. Yeah, uh, take if, more. If possible, please uh, yeah. put it a little bit closer to the camera. Yeah, I can do that. Wow. After this, I will explain how we use these pictures when we teach. Yeah, it's done. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Did you move the screen so we see more audience? There will be a hundred people, not just, um, yeah, not just this group. You did? Yeah. And there are six screen here. Yeah. So uh, the others, no? Yeah. Or oh, the other screen, no, uh, no one draw, yeah? But it's all right, yeah. I will move on now. I will start sharing again. So the way we use picture is this. Uh, I did this many times in the classroom. So each of my students draw a boy and a girl. And then they allow the two of them to interact in some way, but they don't explain it. They don't write in any words. They will pass the picture to the person next to them. Uh, we did that in, in the class with Ika in it. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. So um, the friend will start guessing what's happening in the picture and then will write for you um, either a story or a poem or a dialogue so that it makes sense. And then we stand up, we leave our chair as students. We walk around and we share stories with each other. And then we return to group students out in group. They, they discuss to see which story is the most interesting and they present that story to the class. So it's a way of tapping into language, you know, using um, improvisational drawing as a stimulus to stimulate um, conversation. Yeah, that's what we do. Let me move on. Um, that's just one way of drawing, but if you prefer different styles, let me share two more here. These are characters that I created. For my, for my teaching. Um, I notice if I make the face of the characters big and the body small, the characters look very cute, yeah? And if the face is too small, the body is big, the characters seem to look a little more poetic or romantic for some reason. It's hard to tell, but it doesn't matter what size you choose. Um, you don't have to follow the rule of physics or anything, it's cartoon anyway. Um, I'm gonna share with you a different way to use cartoon after you've created some. You don't have to think about what you do, just when you're free, just draw something and I will show you some effort that you can activate and turn them into activities. Pictures can be used for from, from the top, yeah, to teach vocabulary, as you know to teach role play, to teach grammar. I will demonstrate each of these today. To teach creative thinking, to teach the ability to guess or predict the future or guess the past, to tell stories, to write something, an essay, poem, stories, report, and also you to teach culture, yeah. I'm gonna share with you, yeah. Uh, these are the same thing, but that was, that was a chart. You see, with the chart, it's easy to understand and remember. But if I show you the word, this is exactly the same content, but in words. So hard to read unless you have to highlight things. Yeah. But this one, if I ask you to look 
and try to remember maybe 10 seconds. You can remember half the information. But here, to remember half the information may take half an hour. <clears throat> so let me uh, illustrate now. It's no theory anymore, but um, we'll show, share with you how the pictures are used for actual learning to describe for description. This is an email I draw from um, at the place I was born in, in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. I left um, when I was a teenager. Yeah. I left the city. And I always remember this was a picture I draw in my diary. I didn't mean for it to become language teaching materials or anything. So at first it was just for me to remember what I saw. I live um, in downtown Ho Chi Minh City on at, at the central market and my house is just um, right in front of the market. And um, I live on the third floor of a building, apartment building. Every morning as I open the window and look down into the street, this is exactly what I saw. Life is filled with bustle and in animation. People are doing things, a lot of sound and noise and everything is lively. And so I drew it from memory and keep it in my diary notebook. One day I was bored. I don't know what else to use to teach. Then I flicked through my diary and saw this picture. So I make a photocopy of this and brought to class for a discussion. And we discover that we can use this picture for many things. To teach four skills, to teach grammar. Can we use it for teaching vocabulary? What kind of vocabulary can some of us make command? What kind of words can we teach from this picture? Yeah, you can just shout out what you think. What do you see? What vocabulary do you see? What kind? Uh, may I give my command? Yes, please. Uh, hi, thank you so much. Well, so... Uh, I do think that I, I remember that I used to have this kind of this kind of picture and I used this word teaching simple present continuous tense mm -hmm. or past continuous tense yes. as well as past tense as well. So like uh, the students need to explain what actually happened in the picture. Right. Yes. Thank you, Patria. Very good. Yeah, we Thank can you. use this grammar, all kinds of tenses. We can describe things that are happening right now. We can describe things that were happening in the past. So present, present perfect. Uh, sorry, present, present continuous, past, past continuous, four tenses already. Can we use it to teach a uh, present perfect and present perfect continuous? Imagine things that seem to be happening for a long time in this picture. What kind of thing? You see that at the bottom, people are playing maybe a game or something, or they're drinking tea. So you can say, this group of friends are drink, have been drinking tea for half an hour. Yeah. So you can change the tense. At least six tenses can be used. Yeah. And to teach words, what kind of words? Yeah, feel free to make any comment. Think about on the four skill. Think about how you would teach speaking, writing, any reading? Vocabularies on occupation? Yeah, vocabulary on occupation, yeah. Like policeman, driver, vendor, pet yard driver. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Vocabularies in things? Yes, things, object, items. I think about crowded I see this picture. Yes. Yes. Um, give me some examples if you can, if you like. You, you, you mean vocabularies of the thing or items? Yes. Yeah, yes. like uh, the car. Uh, bicycle, uh, bike, yep. uh, buildings, uh, right. tree, 
Yes. Straight. Yes. Uh, zebra. Yeah. Vehicle and landscape. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Very nice. Can we use this to teach any conversation? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yep. For for example, we can see the the boy uh, the, the boy uh, driving the bicycle mm -hmm. and the uh, the girl riding behind him. Yep. Yep. So what happened? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What might happen? Uh, maybe people are shouting at each other or they are chatting, they are making friends. Um, so your student can choose any characters they like to build conversations from imagination. Um, with reading, I think you might like to create a text, but with writing, it's easy. Your student can either write a description or it can be you for memory. You know, you show this picture. Student have like, 10 to 15 seconds looking at it. And then they you take off the picture, you shut, that, shut off the picture. Student will have to say what they remember. Or you can give them um, clues, yeah? Such as you say bicycle. They will say, there are some bicycles in the picture. You say dinosaur. They will say, there is no dinosaur in the picture. So we can practice the grammar of there is and there are and all kinds of grammar and structure. I will leave that for you to think. Uh, eventually, I will send this, um, these slides to Ika and Bu Ani to share with everyone. So the picture you have here, you will have it in clear, clearer copies. I will move on now to um, the, same, um, the same thing, description, but expanding vocabulary. I created this story. Suppose, yeah, imagine a scenario where a lady is complaining about her boyfriend or her husband, yeah? So she says, my boyfriend always, can you help me? I replace word with pictures, but I don't remember the words. Can you give me the words? Smoke. Smoke and enjoys? Drink. Drinking. Drinking with his friend. On Sundays when he doesn't work, he... Read, 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 and then right, right, right to Tom's house. Tom is his friend. Normally they're good friends, but soon after both of them drunk, drunk, get drunk, they fight, they fight, fight, fight. or argue, and sometimes punch or punch, punch each, each other. other. Yeah, <laughs> and then can you continue? Now let's use imagination and continue. Now you understand why I decided to broke up with him. To break up with him. What else? Are there other options? To be mad at him. To be mad at him, yeah. Yeah. What else? To, what? to be not trusting him. Yes, to lose trust in him, to not trust him anymore, to leave him. To break up with him. To break up with him or to teach him a lesson, maybe to punch him. One of my students say to kill him, but I think it's just a joke. Yeah, no one there to kill anyone. Um, another thing is, suppose this is a lesson about relationship. We can ask students to create the perspective of the boy, yeah, of the, the man or the husband or the boyfriend. So that the boy starts saying, and I ask my student to create what the boy say. Can you imagine and create that for me verbally? Yeah. So imagine the, boy, the man is talking. So he starts saying this. Uh, I will say, and I stop you, continue. Yeah. My girlfriend always complain. Yes, complain. My girlfriend always complain and enjoy. Enjoy what? Shopping. shopping. Enjoy shopping with her friends. On Sunday, when she doesn't work, she... What does she do? She works for a bit. Yeah, she yes. works. But if she doesn't work, what does she do? Scrolling TikTok. Watching movie. She watches movies. Time, and then... 
maybe and then she called her friend for a chat clean yeah. the house yes go to a friend's house normally they are good friends but after both of them both of them tell me something that may go wrong Sometimes they are jealous of each other. Yeah. One person is beautiful, the other person jealous. Yeah. So they might argue. So I let my children continue and then eventually um, this lesson can develop further after the two perspectives. You can then have a conversation between the boy and the girl. So I asked my children to work in pairs and then pretend that they're arguing yeah or they can use this for writing the girl will write about the boy to complain to um, his mother or the the boy will write about the girl to complain to his to her father yeah or both of them can go to counselor to get help the counselor will talk to both of them or they can write to newspaper column and say, can you solve my issue? It's complex. Yeah. So it's a whole lesson, but supposedly this is just the beginning where you teach your students vocabulary so that they can use for this lesson about human emotion and relationship, yeah. if you like. But this is just an example. You can use any other scenario in very much the same way. Um, let me give you another scenario. And I want you to think for me how we teach from this. Yeah. I use these two characters to introduce a lesson. Can you tell me what seemed to be the relationship between these two characters? You uh, father and son? Yes, could be father and son. And what's happening between them? Uh, seems like the father... Uh, kind of give an advice uh, to his son, but yes. uh, he give the advice in a angry way. Yes, in a rude way. Son did something wrong. Yeah. What do you think the son might have done? Maybe spending too much money. Yeah. He's playing game too much, sir. He playing game too much, and the father say. Why don't you study? I pay your school fee very high and you're killing time and you, you're, you're ruining family reputation. Yeah. Suppose um, they, they are not father and son. Who else can they be? Teacher and student. Yes, teacher and student. Yeah. So what happened? What is the teacher saying? Can you imagine what you are saying to your student angrily? Why did you come late, maybe? Why did you come late? Why didn't you do your homework? Yeah. Any other kinds of relationship be, be, besides these two? Why, did you, smoke, why you did you smoke in the, in the class? Smoking. Yes, why do you smoke in the class? Smoking is not allowed, yeah. So teacher and student, any other relationship? Can be boss and his staff. Yes, can be boss and staff, his staff, yeah. So the boss is angry, maybe the staff did something wrong. So we can generate um, scenario, relationship, emotion, conversation. You can ask your children to team up and have a conversation. One person makes a mistake. The other person is upset and trying to fix the mistake or giving advice in an angry way. Yeah. Um, what I think you can do is it doesn't matter what topic your lesson is going to be about. Sit there and think and then create characters for students to, to talk about first. Uh, it's a good way, first of all, to warm up their mood for the topic. Second, to generate vocabulary needed so that you can teach more yeah, related to the topic. Number three is to uh, catch attention. Because if we start like open your book to page lesson 
then student will be sleepy. But if you show a picture and ask them to chat about it, um, they will be curious. They will pay attention to you. Yeah. So at least those three um, reasons will explain why we need a picture to begin with. But of course, you don't do that for every lesson. Sometimes you change, you use other things. Um, I think this doesn't move much. Let me see. Yeah. This is another skill using pictures to teach connection. You asking, inviting students to use imagination to create a story by connecting these items. Can you help me? Can you think of what seems to be happening here among these elements? There's a short story book, there's a man, and there's an ambulance. What happens? How about he is a writer and he walks mm -hmm. too much and then he gets sick? Yep. He works too hard. Maybe he's a writer. He writes day and night. And then he gets sick and he got carried away in an ambulance. Yeah, very good. If your student can think quickly like you, they are very good. They have the ability to, to build logic and to use imagination. Um, a Greek philosopher, Aristotle, said um, creativity is the ability to make connection among seemingly unassociated elements. And if someone can do that very quickly, they are, that is the evidence or a sign of a creative person. Yeah. Let's try to do some more. I, I'm going to give you a few more scenario and I'd like you to respond with a quick storytelling moment. Yeah. We have a dog, a rod or stick or a whip. Yeah. And someone's leg being hurt. What happens? Uh, somebody somebody beat yeah. the dogs. Uh, somebody uh, beat the dogs because uh, it's a beat uh, someone else. Yes. Yes. Somebody tried to punish the dog because the dog is naughty. The dog beat someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can turn it around and say someone punished the dog for no reason. Someone just become violent and hit the dog for nothing, for fun. So the dog bite him back. Yeah. It can go both way. Uh, I share with you a few more and I'd like to invite you to explain. Yeah. Got a cat, a mouse, and a piece of cheese. What could happen? Anyone? Uh, uh, somebody uh, bought a piece of a cheese for the mouse to come uh, to be easy for the cat to attack the mouse. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, somebody brought the cheese in for, for, for the mouse or for the cat? Uh, for the mouse. So the mouse will come in to eat the cheese and it will be oh, easy. Oh, it's easy a trap. For, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. it will be easy for cat to catch mouse. Yes, it's a the cheese serve as a bait, yeah, as a trick, so that the mouse will stay around with the cheese, then the cat will come and eat the mouse. And then when the cheese is not finished, the cat can finish the cheese too. Um, another skill is using picture to, to guess the past and predict the future. Every image you show may be a frozen moment of present, yeah. So when you show something, you can ask your students to explain what had just happened already and what is going to happen next. Sometimes you can draw a picture like that. For example, this one. Make sure the picture is vague, ambiguous, not clear. What do you think had just happened here? Yeah, let's uh, try. I think, yeah. Yeah. I, yes. think, uh, the, I think a man just get Fired from a job. Yes, could be one scenario. He could be fired from his job. Yeah. What else? He's an employee. Yeah. 
Any other explanations? Um, he is tired from working all day and he want to go to sleep. Okay, just tired from working all day and walking like a zombie back home to sleep immediately. Yeah, just a tired man. Yeah, not sad, but tired. Anything else? Uh, maybe his wife like fire him, uh, like uh, kick him out from the home. Yes, maybe he's not a good person. He uh, he make money, but he spend it all. So his wife say, go away. I don't want you anymore in this house. Kick him out. Yeah. Has that happened to any of us here? I hope not. So the next thing we do is we, we invite our student to guess what happened next. Where does the man go after he got fired or after he got kicked out by his wife or after he lost his job um, or someone said in my class said he lost his key. Yeah. So he wanted to find a key to make sure that he won't be locked out. Um, you will give this picture to small groups and ask them to explain and create a story and then present the story. So this picture is a, it's a, it's a stimulus for storytelling. Um, can you try to make another story here? There's a man popping his head out the window in a, in a building. And then he's looking into someone else's window. So what seems to be happening here? Uh, maybe he called somebody or uh, his girlfriend in the other, in his neighbor home. Yeah. Or play, play yeah. Yep. Maybe he he's trying to make friends, yeah. Or yeah. Someone friendly, someone he wants to be friendly with. Any other options, explanation? He caught his wife cheating with his neighbor. Oh, okay. Yeah, his wife is chatting with his neighbor and he's asking his wife to come back home. Say, come home. You've been there too long. Yeah. One of my students said, um, this man is watching his favorite football game, but that day his TV is broken. So he has to watch someone else's TV. Could be endless possibility. And it will be fun if you give this picture to your students, get them to tell the story, uh, their story. Um, you'll be surprised how creative they are. What do you think is happening here? And what had just happened? And what's next? Anyone? A woman um, checking out the unconscious person mm -hmm. in the streets. Yeah, so she's trying to help. Suddenly a man collapsed and she wants to help. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. Do you think the man is alive? I think no. No, maybe he's I dead. I think he just passed out. Oh, okay. Any other explanation? So they are strangers. Yeah, one is trying to check what's happening. But suppose they are not strangers, what could be happening? I think the man was drunk and then. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, the man was drunk. And what is the woman trying to do? To help him. Okay, yeah, to help him, to revive him. The man was too drunk and he collapsed. One of my students said, um, this is a couple. And the man proposed, will you marry me? The girl was too shy to accept. So she said no. And the man fell down. He had a heart attack. <laughs> and so the girl said, honey, I was just kidding. <laughs> but the man died already. Yeah. So <laughs> When you, you, you cannot believe sometimes their imagination is better than our imagination. You know? These stories I just told you are from my students and they're better than me in the way they see the world. Prediction, yeah, we use for example. Sometimes you draw a story in different panels, different shots, yeah, and you will show them one at a time to have students guess what's going on. Maybe you can tell me what's happening to this man. What is he trying to do? Here? Why is he running? 
He's late uh, for work. Yeah, he's late. He comes to the office. Yes, he's late for the office. So he's running. Can you give me more possibilities? If not office, then what else could it be that he's being late for? His wallet. Uh, yes. yes, again. Again, what is he late for? What does the place look like to us? The place seems far. Maybe it's hospital. Maybe hospital, yeah. Could be running to hospital because someone is ill. He's trying to visit them. They are in emergency, yeah. Could be. I give you a hint. He's trying to travel. Travel. So what could that place be? Station. Station. What else? I think ship station or... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, for a boat. Uh, yeah. Like um, Boki. Boki. Yeah, is where the ship is leaving from. Yeah. Could be Boki or could be station. What else could he be travel by? By a plane. Plane, yeah, could be late for the plane. Now, I think that's the correct answer according to my story. So he is late for his flight. Do you think he will catch his flight in time? No. no. Maybe not. I will show you the next one. So when he came to the airport, the plane was already taking off. And look at the man. How <laughs> do you think he feels? He looks sad. He looks very sad. Oh no, late. How can I take another flight soon? I'm late. And then suddenly something happened. Something different happened. Do you want something to happen to the man or to the plane? The plane. Oh, something happened to the plane. Boom. <laughs> yeah, exploded. Yeah, someone shot the plane. Yeah. Look at the man. How do you think his feeling change? He's happy, sir. He's happy, or maybe more accurately, he's relieved. He's like, oh, no, no, thank you. Thank you. God, I'm alive. But this is not the end of the story. I will show you the end after you guess what happened next. Something happened to him. Yeah. Can you I guess? The Rex fall. Uh, I Yes, I, correct. Yeah. I think uh, he uh, he get left by a plane, but somehow he re he relieved because uh, the plane is explode. So he just think that uh, just think that he's safe. Yes, but he's not safe. Someone guessed uh, correctly just now. <laughs> a piece of the just plane. Target. Yes, hurt him. Yeah, boom, <laughs> and he died too. Yeah, <laughs> what is the moral of this story? Every story should have a moral. Yeah, what do we learn from this story? Don't believe, <laughs> don't believe. Yeah, don't believe in luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sometimes something in life happens badly, but something good will happen next. There's a story, old, very old story in China. Um, in the old time, there were war between different um, lords. Yeah, there were different countries. China was not one country, so people were fighting, and everyone went to war. Died. That time, there was a man who who was practicing riding a horse, and he fell off, and he broke his leg. After that, the army didn't recruit him. Say, no, no, you cannot be a soldier. Go home. And he's the only one left in the village. The only man left in the village. Surviving, yeah. So people say, um, blessing in disguise in English, they say that. I don't know if you have a similar phrase in Bahasa. Blessing in disguise, meaning something bad happened but turned out to be luck, good luck, or the opposite. Sometimes people win the lottery and they have a lot of money. They certainly rich overnight, but they use money to buy a race car and die racing, you know. Yeah, life is like that. Does that happen to you? Yeah. Sometimes I look back on my life and sometimes I fail. 
but it was luck. For example, when I was applying for a job at Monash, I applied for many jobs, for seven jobs, one in Hong Kong, two in Singapore, uh, one in New Zealand, two in Australia. I applied to Monash and Melbourne, and then Otago University, Institute of Education in Hong Kong, National University of Singapore, Simeo Singapore. Um, and then I got my last job. I was rejected first. I got rejected in Hong Kong. I got rejected in New Zealand. And I was sad as, oh my God, I have a PhD, but no one wanted me. <laughs> and I just keep fail, fail, fail. Yeah. Finally, Monas informed me. We would like to offer you the job. And I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, I like Monash the most. But it came the last year. That's why, yeah. That's why I meet Ika there. It was very good luck to, to meet someone like Ika who really helped me. Thank um, you. No worries. So I share with you another skill here. I think the word is hidden. But anyway, um, this is a very exciting game that you can do with your students, yeah. So let me show you the procedure. I will send these slides to you. Now, first of all, the topic is hunting. And you will teach students these words first. Hunter, forest, rabbit, gun, shoot, wild pig or boar, game, uh, and return. Yeah, teach them these words. And then you will divide your student into small groups of six people, six people per group. If there are not enough six people, then one person can play two roles, but we need six roles here. So the next step is you ask your student in every group to number their members. So in group of six, there will be number one to number six. Everyone has a number, yeah? And then next minute, you ask number one to be ready to look at the screen, but other numbers, have to close their eyes. So you will show them one picture. And then you keep doing the same thing. Only number two can look and other numbers close their eyes. Eventually they all open their eyes and you put the pictures away, they can't see. So each of them only see a segment of the story. The story is was, was, was drawn in six images, but each of them only remember one. So now, they will have to have a conversation and they build a story through conversation. What each of them saw, they will report to the group and then they will work it out, the procedure, what's happening. I show you the story. Um, there is procedure, you can use this procedure that I just described, I will send to you. Yeah, so this is one. Maybe you can guess. So the man, yeah, leaving home at the forest. This is what he saw. But you don't show them in this order. You can mix them up. The man shot the rabbit, but the rabbit ran away. And a boar came out from the bush and chased him. So he couldn't hunt anymore. He's, he was being hunted, yeah. In life, it's like that. The, hunt, the hunter become the hunted. And then he's hopeless. So on the way back home, he stopped by the butcher and he bought a dead rabbit and he brought home. His wife came out and said, oh, my husband's so good. He's a good hunter. Yeah. So you're the you are only one knowing the story, but your students don't. They have to work it out. Yeah. So uh, we did this in Ika's class and it was really fun. Yeah. yeah. So you this for your students. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they will enjoy it. They will laugh a lot. You can have a competition, set up a competition to see which one, which group works out the, the, the story first, will win and you have something for them. Yeah, so I described what to do. Um, it's okay, you, you will receive this in the end, but this is the whole, whole scene. I also have a lot of picture I create like this. This is not the only one, but I have so many. Yeah, um, if you like, I can share them with you. And then you can cut them up and now and then, yeah. Uh, when the atmosphere becomes boring, you bring this into class, students will be so happy to learn. Now, another thing to do 
is to give them something to explain. But in order to explain, they cannot just talk. They have to draw. So the picture is non-complete. This man is running for a reason, but what is that reason? To explain the reason, they have to draw into this picture. Yeah, I wish we had um, the opportunity. If we are in the real room right now, I would ask you to draw, but maybe you can talk now. Why do you think this man is running? Is he after something or is something after him? Just random guess doesn't matter. Yeah. Anyone? I think yes. he stole something for a supermarket. Yes. And, and people are running after him. Yes. Maybe people run after him. Why did he did he do something wrong? He stole something from supermarket. Yeah, maybe he stole something from supermarket and the manager found out and they want to arrest him. So he run, yeah. So something is after him. Or he could be running, he could be the manager running after the thief himself. Yeah. Stop him, he's a thief. Yeah, could be. When I bring this into class and give students some time to think and draw, there were so many exciting stories. One story is about breaking up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. So the girl broke up with this man and the man ran after the girl and said, I love you. Aku <laughs> sayang kamu. Yeah. But the girl is like, no, no, no. I don't want you anymore. Yeah. Or this man is running away from his girlfriend. And his girlfriend is running after you and say, sorry, sorry. And say, no, no. Don't say sorry. You're bad. But of course, this is just one, yeah? But I will let you do that with your students, run, run this activity and report back to me if you can to see what happened. Um, some of my student explanation, they say uh, a crazy dog is chasing the man. Someone said a policeman is chasing the man because he did something wrong. Or it could be Policeman chasing the man and his dog. <laughs> or a dog chasing policeman and another man. Yeah? It could be really fun. Or you can give these three images to students to play around and explain what happened. It's just not one shot, but it can be the whole story. So this is an example, but you can use imagination to read other things, but don't complete the picture, draw something. For example, you draw a sad person, one person crying and ask your student to explain why this person is crying, yeah. Anything can be a story, but don't finish it. Um, Sometimes you can give children, not one person, but half a person and then let, let them explain, yeah. Okay, so this is example of half a person. These two people are doing something that we don't know. Can you look at this picture and tell me if these two people are sad or happy? Anyone? I think they're just yawning. Yeah, they're just yawning. They're not sad, they're not happy. I make this ambiguous so children cannot tell and interpretation will be um, endless, yeah? They can be yawning like, oh, so sleepy. How about we sleep now? Yeah, I agree. Oh, so sleepy. Yeah, could be. Can you explain more for me? I would ask you to draw if we are in the same um, seminar room now. It will be extremely fun. My students drew many interesting things I will show you after this. But I want you to guess first. Can you guess what your student will draw in? One is yawning and conversation. Sleepy, sleepy. What are some others? They are singing. Oh, yeah, they are singing. What kind of song? Ika, what song is popular now, Ika? <laughs> hmm. Tunggu Aku. Tunggu Aku, yeah, yeah. that's the song that you wrote. Wait for me, Tunggu Aku. And the other one, yeah, but I cannot wait for you, yeah. <laughs> what else? <laughs> 
what else, Ika? What are some popular songs that we should learn? It's like the song from Zifa. Do you guys know the title? Zifa? Zifa yeah. and Rizky Fabian. Rasa Cinta. <laughs> that song. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they could sing that song. Is it a love song? Is it about that is a love that? song? Yeah, that's a duet. Oh, yes, a duet. Yeah. So they are singing a duet, sweet song, and they are romantic. From from sleepy to romantic. It's called Terlukis Indah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you sing it? No, sir. No, you're shy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's okay. When I come to Jogja, you must sing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But right now we can wait. Um, can we imagine these two are angry, very angry? What could they be saying? Maybe they are in a relationship and they are fight over exactly. food. Yes, maybe they are in relationship they and they are arguing. Food. Yeah, they are arguing about food. I don't want to eat this today. And the other person say, that's the only thing we have today. If you want something else, you go buy it. <laughs> no, I have no time. Then I have no time to cook another dish. <laughs> we eat outside. We don't have money. <laughs> Imagine conversation, yeah. It will be extremely fun. After your children draw something, they can present at that moment is always extremely fun. Children laugh so much. I will show you some scenario. Uh, before I show you any more explanation, so far we have different moods here. Happy, in love, sad, angry, anything? I think they are brother and sister who lost the, the one they love, sir. Oh, yeah. They may yeah. lost, they, they may have a cat and they lost the cat. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. a cat named Kitty, yeah. Little yeah. Kitty died. And the man, <laughs> Kitty, where are you? And the woman, oh, I cannot have another Kitty. I just love this one, yeah can be like that. Very good explanation. Okay, so when my student gave me their picture, I redraw because I didn't have their picture now. I redraw them, but their ideas. One is um, fighting. Yeah, yeah. One of you guessed correctly, yeah. Uh, so yeah, get correctly, very good. Fighting, and they're angry, or they're sweet. They're singing a love song, yeah. You know, Elvis Presley song, Love Me Tender, Love Me Sweet. Tell me you are mine. Or they can be very, very angry and violent, killing each other. Yeah. <laughs> My student's idea, not me. Yeah. But I draw them again from, <laughs> the, from memory. Or they can be extremely sweet. Can you imagine? Getting married. <laughs> Come on, sweetie, we are late for the ceremony. Oh, I'm so excited, honey. Yeah. Or they, they could be in the car, Dr. Dad. Oh, they could be in the car, yeah. Yeah. They could be in an open rooftop car, yeah. And the car is modern and they are going together and they are like, let's go, let's marry. Or they are fighting, husband and wife. <laughs> wife say, I cannot sleep. You, you're snoring. Husband say, you are a liar. I, I don't know. I didn't hear myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I show you again. One thing you notice, um, the image I, I, I provided doesn't change. Yeah. See, exactly. I, I go quickly so you see that it doesn't change. Only the body change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So interesting. I really strongly recommend you, um, that you run this activity in your class and you will have endless options and it will be fun. We use um, picture to teach culture as well. Um, believe it or not, when you move around different countries, people behave so differently. I think Ika will be able to tell you how people behave differently in Australia compared to Georgia. Ika, do you, do you have any culture shock? In Australia? Um, yeah, 
one time I was waiting for the bus and suddenly mm-hmm. like a man, I think he's like um not young but not too old. Mm-hmm. But I guess he was like smoking weed and like he suddenly like talk randomly. Oh. It was even though it was not to me, but yeah, like oh, sometimes you can see yeah. yeah, you can see like people like oh. get drunk in the street, yeah. but not always, yeah. obviously, but yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah, you are not true. lucky you can find that. Yeah. Yes. In Georgia, people don't drink, so they behave very well. But in Australia, yeah. sometimes people do that. Yeah, culture shock. And sometimes some things, sometimes things that are normal in one culture can be very strange in another culture. For example, I show these pictures to people. Yeah, like people are um, holding each other. So I use this picture to ask people in different countries. And I get very different answers. Let's think about Georgia, yeah. And we will, Ika and I will tell you about Australia. Which of these is commonly seen and acceptable in the culture? Two girls are close. Two men are close. A man and a woman, very close. Yeah. What is common Ika in Australia? And we can ask the rest on what is com- not common in Georgia. I think all three of them are acceptable here. Yeah, I, in Australia, yeah. Yes, we the don't only really one, wonder. Yeah, the only one that happened less in Australia is the middle. Yeah, like women can be close, men and women, but two men normally keep a distance. Normally in Australia. But in India, men are very close to each other. Yeah. What about in Georgia? In East Java, what happens? What, which one is not common here from, from these images? One, two, or three? In, in public, men and women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In public. Yeah. Yeah, men and women are not close like this. For... But one and two are okay, yeah? Yeah, for very close friends, the middle is all right. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like you and me, but mama. Yeah. Like this, yeah. 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 Or or Bu, Buani and Ika can be in the first one, yeah. Very mm. easy, but not the third one. Let me show you maybe two more scenarios for fun in case you use um talk about culture, culture differences. Giving gift in um in each Java, when you receive a gift, do you open it immediately or do you wait? You wait. You wait, yeah. When do you open it? After when you open Oh, okay. After the other person goes away, you open it later, yeah. In Australia, they open it immediately and will say something, yeah, we say, Wow, that's lovely. I've been wanting this. Thank you. Yeah. What about the third one? Do you refuse a gift? Someone give you a gift? Say, no, thank you. Don't give it to me. Not come no. out of Indonesia. Yeah. No, it's not come out. Yeah. In Japan, it happens sometimes. I remember I have a Japanese colleague and um, she's a professor. And I bought a book for her. She's from Melbourne University. And so I went and visited the university and I, I gave her the book. And she said, oh, I cannot take this book. It's just so too expensive. I don't deserve it. And so she refused. But I know the culture. So I know that not real refusal. She just act shy. So I keep the book in my hand and I keep talking with her. And after a few minutes, I offer the book a second time. I say, please take this book. I bought it for you. And she said, oh, it's too expensive and too valuable. I, I may not be able to have it. I'm really sorry. And I keep the book and I keep talking. I wait for her to calm down. And then after a few moments, I offer the book a third time. I say, if you don't take this book, I will be so sad. Please take this book to make me happy. And she said, really? I apologize for the trouble, but I accept it. Thank you so much. And she accepted it. Yeah. 
So <laughs> in her culture, you have to resist the gift. That's why sometimes when you give a gift to Japanese, instead of saying thank you, they say I'm sorry. Instead of thank you, but of mm. course in the language, not not in English. I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Vietnamese culture, in the old time, people wait. They don't open the gift. They wait for the other person. I remember my mother received a gift from her friend, and she waited for her friend to leave the house, and she start opening the gift. And suddenly, the friend forgot her purse, so she came back, and my mother so embarrassed. Oh no, no! I opened the gift already. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, very embarrassed. Yeah, very interesting. Um, when I was a student in England, every time I went back to Vietnam. I bought a gift for my professor, and I gave him. Um, when I gave it to him, I expect him to open it because in English culture, people open gift immediately, but he didn't open it because he went to Southeast Asia a lot, and he understand the culture of Southeast Asia. People don't don't open it too quick, so he he prefer to keep it for later. But I expected him to open it in English culture. But he expected me to go away, so we didn't agree. We look at each other with embarrassment, and I just said there was tension. But I said it's okay to open it now if you like. And so he said, "Really? Okay, thank you." So he opened it. Sometimes culture clash in interesting ways. Yeah, yeah. So if you use images to teach culture, you might generate very interesting discussion, like we did just now. Um, one more, yeah. Suppose someone is ill and is in hospital. What do you normally give in um, your culture? Food. You give food, yeah. Yes. Food, yes. Or flowers. Or flowers, yeah. Actually, all of them, sir. Yeah. What else do you give? Yeah. Money. Anyone? Yeah. Sometimes money. Yes. Yeah, sometimes money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In um, in Vietnamese culture, if you give flowers, mean the person died already. <laughs> so if someone is in hospital and you bring a lot of flower, the person will be so scared and shocked. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't give flower, but in Australia, yeah, they give flower all the time. You give a card, yeah, like. But Bam Bam said we give money. Sometimes we give something as a hobby. Like if the person like book, you give book. If the person like iPhone, you give iPhone, but too expensive. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> pretend not to know that. Yeah, yeah. So use this, and you can draw. These are my drawings. All of them. Um, I use them often in my classes. Really, Dad? You yes. Use all of them. Yeah, I draw all of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I try to practice this habit. is a bit bit difficult, but I try never using any picture from the internet. And the reason, like I said, to share with you, first is relevant to what exactly I want, but I also show students that I care about them. Mm -hmm. When you show love for your student, they learn better. They know that this teacher is there for them, and they love them. Yeah. Remember, I started this discussion today with a story. I would like to finish this discussion with a story too. But I think I told you many stories already. I want you to tell me a story. I will not speak, but I will show you story in picture and you tell me. Is it okay? We will take turn. Yeah. You don't need to raise your hand or anything. Just talk. Um, so here. But before, this is an activity for students. So before... Uh, you share this with your student, you teach them words. Here, I don't need to teach you any words because you're ready to advance. But um, when you run this activity in your class, teach them vocabulary, so free task. For example, once upon a time, lady, beautiful island, love, letter, bottle, sea, ship, captain. I think you can guess already. So... Let me show you the story and you tell me. Yeah. Can you start with once upon a time? Anyone? We'll take turn. Okay. Anyone? 
Once upon a time, there is a woman waiting for someone in the mm -hmm. island. Yes, good, very good. Once upon a time, there was a woman waiting for someone on the island. Perfect. Let's see what happened. What happened here? She is very popular around the man, uh, the boys in yes, the town. Very yeah, very popular among the boys, among men. What are the men trying to do? They want to marry her. Yeah, they all want to marry her. What do they bring? They offer her. Yeah, many offer her ring, ring, love. money, flower. But does she like them? Do you think? I don't think so. I yeah, think she, she doesn't like look like she likes. Why isn't? Why doesn't she like them? I think she likes ah. another man. Yes, yeah, she like another man. These men don't look handsome, yeah? So, yeah. So what do they do? Uh, they kill them. Now. Yeah, they kill themselves. Life is not worth living if the person you love doesn't love you back. Does that happen to us? No? Oh. Very sad, very sad. But that's not the end. There's more. Someone else? Yeah, tell a story. Continue. Yes. She's dreaming about the man she loves. Yes. She's, every night she dream about the man she loves. What kind of man do you think she's dreaming about? A handsome man like the Handsome prince. man. Yeah. Yes. Handsome man. Maybe a prince. prince. Yeah. So what do, what do you think she will do? She write a letter for the prince. Yes. She write a letter. That was in the old time. There was no phone or internet or anything. Not even TV. So she wrote the letter and... But she's writing a letter to who? No one. What do you think she put in the letter? I think she unconfidently to send his letter, sir. Yeah. She unconfidently to send his letter. Yeah. 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 You want to keep it on the bottle and send it in the yeah. sea? Yes, and correct. And someone can get that bottle. Yeah. And... Yes, come to her. So she throw the bottle out into the sea. Remember those men who kill themselves for not being able to have her? They're still there, yeah, yes. but time passed. So. Can someone describe what happened? Yeah. Yes. The, the bottle floating for days and days and days. Yes. And days. yes, day and day. Until? Until Jack Sparrow found it. Yeah, <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Exactly. Jack Sparrow found it. Okay, you want to see the picture of Jack Sparrow? Here. <laughs> Jack Sparrow. Handsome Jack Sparrow. Yeah. And then? Yeah, describe for me. What happens? He is reading the letter. Yes. And how do you think he feels? He feel, fell in love with the letter and there yes. is a picture of her. Yes. So he falls in love with the letter and the picture. Yes. What do you think he decided to do? But he's on his ship. Will he turn his ship around for her, do you think? Maybe. Yes, maybe. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. I think your guest is my guest too. We like him to turn his ship around. Unfortunately, his crew disagree. Say, no, no, no. We're in our cause. We, we keep going. But he disagree. So he hop into a boat. Yeah and say goodbye to the ship. You no longer have me as captain. Sorry. Follow the call of my heart. How beautiful. What is he doing? He is tired. Yeah, he's tired. Somehow tired. the machine is uh, off, so he must paddle it. Yes, somehow the engine is off, so he must row the boat. And he's very slow. He rose slowly. 
the boat moved very little and he could die day and night. But um, the call of love is stronger than his health. Finally, what happens? He arrived to the island. He arrived at the island. Do you think he finds the home? Not yet. Not yet. He keeps walking, walking. And then? He finds her house. Yeah, he finds her house. And he... Trying to knock the door. Trying to knock on the door. And the door open. And then? Can you guess? Um, you know, it's different from the picture. <laughs> yeah, the woman from the picture show up. Or they become the same. Or they become a grandma. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the woman come out and <laughs> explain. He said, "Oh, I received this beautiful letter with the beautiful lady picture with it. I want I fall in love and I want to marry this girl. Is your granddaughter home? <laughs> what do you think she respond?" It's me. Oh, it's me. That is a <laughs> old letter me? from you. Yes. Exactly. Years ago. It takes you so long. <laughs> That's right. She burst into tears. She said, honey, what took you so long? <laughs> ah, he's screaming in terror. <laughs> I've been waiting for you <laughs> for 40 years. So the Bob Thomas have been floating, yeah for a very long time, plus the boat, no engine, and the rowing took so long, yeah. What's the moral of this story? Never trust a person from social media. <laughs> yes, exactly, never trust someone from social. I have a sister who make friends with a man in social media, and finally they agree to meet. Um, <laughs> yes. And so the moment she saw him, you know what she said. She looked at him and she kept silent for a moment. And she said, you look really good online. <laughs> <laughs> Very sad, yeah? So yeah. don't trust social media. Any other moral? Please don't forget to write the date. <laughs> yes, please don't forget to write the date. That's very good, yeah. When you write a letter, make yes, sure smart. you know that. Yes, smart, Aisha. <laughs> yes. One of my students came up with a very funny moral. He said, don't be picky. Marry anyone you meet. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dangerous, yeah? <laughs> you have to know them. But anyway, it's fun to discuss this kind of story. So you then have follow-up tasks more of the story and they can retell the story to each other. That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Uade. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess all the audiences don't want this to end, Dr. Dad. We have we need to have like more sessions in the future. Thank you. you, want you, you. Don't you yeah. agree with me? We need to have some question and yeah. answer. Or oh, maybe yeah. uh, some quizzes. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, as, yeah. Thank you, Bwani. So, as I have uh, remind you earlier, we're going to have question and answer. Um, you can just unmute yourself. You can raise hand first, for example, or you can also type uh, from the chat box. And I have a talk with Aisha as well. If some of you are following the streaming on the YouTube, for example, you can still put the questions down on the comment sections and Aisha will read that questions for us as well. So yeah, we are open to questions and answer. Yeah, thank you, Ika, that's a great idea. You can bring questions to me. Yeah, and, then yeah. and we also think about making quiz, Dr. Dad. So maybe yes. you can come up with several questions to ask to the audiences and we're sure. going to give some surprise. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want the quiz now or later? We can do it now. We can do it later as well. Maybe while waiting for the questions, we can do some quiz first. Yes, of course. Yes, please do. Yeah. 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 So maybe the first question, mm -hmm. maybe not the question. It's from me. So um, because oh, sure. like previously okay. we have a draw. Yeah. 
Yeah, we have drawn um, as asked by Dr. Dad, as required by Dr. Dad. So I would like maybe one of you guys to show the picture, but also tell the story to us. What does your picture mean? Tell us about that. So for the first uh, audience, probably you can share and then you're going to get door prize from us, from the English Education Department. And yeah, for other audiences, you can type your questions and also raise hand. Does anyone want to try to show the picture and share? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have Tariq, Tariq uh, Al Obadi. You can unmute yourself. Feel free to show and also introduce yourself first. Tariq, we would like to know. Uh, yeah, assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank you and uh, the doctor and all, all the participants. Uh, actually, I am not good at drawing, but uh, I like uh, the way it's so nice. It's like attract mm -hmm. me so much. Mm -hmm. uh, I try that time to draw this. This like uh, it's like uh, parents, father and mother. Oh, lovely. Argument like and uh, the the I think and the father try to see to the wife like you are divorced. Here mm -hmm. is the, here is the uh, their son. He is or a daughter. He is like crying. Uh, so how how his future will be during like uh, family like separating and is like big issue in uh, many societies when the parents like get like uh, divorced or uh, separated. The one who will be uh, the victim is the children. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. Mm, very interesting. Thank you very, very much. Good. Meaningful, very meaningful, yeah. Thank you, Tariq. So, wow, I think this activity is interesting, Dr. Mm. Dad. Maybe you should have Beautiful. one more. Yes, yes, sure. Yeah. We're open for one more, if anyone else want to share. Yes, definitely. Anyone? Or maybe from the lecturers as well. We would love to see. One more story. Okay, so while waiting for another student to also share about the story, we will continue to the question and answer session. To anyone who wants to ask, feel free to write it down to the chat box, or maybe there are already questions on the comment section. Aisha, have you checked it? On the YouTube, we must yes. read maybe. Yeah, sure. Oh, sorry, in YouTube, there is no question yet. So maybe in this Zoom, everyone can be yeah. asking or maybe telling the story of the picture. Yes, we would love to see from the audiences. I know the talk was so interesting and also clear because we can directly uh, talk to each other. We can have uh, discussions as well. Um, that's the thing that I really appreciate from Dr. Dad. Sometimes when we come to the class, we don't realize that the lesson has already started because he directly uh, show us how to teach, especially during, uh, on this topic, using visual pedagogy, using visual to teach English in language classroom. Um, it's really interesting, um, especially to teach young students, isn't it, Dr. Dat? I also remember last semester, I talk about using play and imagination to teach sure. yes. students. Yeah. That's lovely, yeah. Yeah, so we are still open to question and answer. Don't forget that we're going to give you door prize if uh -huh. you um, ask questions and also if you share your picture to us. Yeah. I'm sorry, I want to ask a question. Sure. Sure. So, Dr. Dad, where did you get all of those imagination and how you can uh, draw the gesture? 
Very good. Um, okay. Um, very good question. The thing is, um, one one of the strongest reasons why I draw a picture is I care about students. I think you can do the same. It's not about ability, but it's about how much you want your student to do. And so it comes from the need to create fun in the classroom. Yeah, more than anything else. You don't, we don't need to be able to draw beautifully. Sometimes the picture can be ugly and the fun is there, you know. For example, one of my students tried to draw a dog, but the dog happened to look like a dinosaur. <laughs> so when she showed the picture to everyone and start telling uh, her story, people say, oh, is it dinosaur? And everyone laughed. So um, we don't need to be an artist, but it happened that I, I was an artist before I became a teacher. I was working for newspaper. I draw pictures for books and things. So. I like to draw. That's one thing. But later, when I when I um, learn more about pedagogy, I think there's a need in pedagogy in our field. They always um, scholars always promote the idea of connecting with your student personally. If you cannot connect with their, them personally, effectively, emotionally, you're not helping them enough. So I thought one way of connecting. <laughs> is to tell my own story to students, to draw funny pictures for my students, to bring something that my student can play with. Yeah. Sometimes I bring instruments into the class to teach through music. Sometimes we play football in the class. Um, I didn't do that at in Ika's class, but in other classes, I use football to teach. Sometimes I use drama and this is interesting. I will act in the role of um, three people and I keep acting without talking. There's no words in the play. So I act three people through action and um, facial expressions. People have to guess what's happening in the story and they tell me. And then the class is divided into small teams, each of which will then come up with a scenario without talking, just mind me. And they will prepare for 20 minutes and they come up and present the play without words and the class will then tell the story and that is the use of drama um, so picture is just one of those methods we use sport we use a material we bring material for example one time i brought a bag into a soft bag uh, make of um, linen yeah a bag and i put into the bag many things for students to guess so I tie up the bag so they can't look inside. I pass the bag around. I call it mystery bag. So students would touch the bag from the outside and tell me what's, what's, what's inside. And once they get something correct, I will pull it out and give it to them. And we talk about that item as a way of learning vocabulary and um, the purpose of the, of the item. What is it used for? and so on and so forth. So we use drama, we use music, uh, art, we use real objects, we use many different things to teach an art um, cartoon happen to just be one of them. And if we are someone with a lot of love for students, with imagination and with the need to connect with students well, um, that, that's the main reason why I keep, I keep drawing for, for my classes. And I think it's not about skill or ability. It's about the thinking, you know. Once you have this mindset, everything is easy. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the question as well, um, but Puja, Punja Stala. So yeah. we still open for more questions, everyone. So. Uh, you can type it down on the chat and also unmute or raise hand. And also we are still open if you want to like share the story of your picture, just like Dorik has did. Yeah. Yeah, we have one more question here. Seems like Mr. Patria Handung Jaya, raise hand. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Ms. Ika and Dr. Datbao for the opportunity. Well, I'm not really sure on how to formulate this question, but this is my question. Sometimes when we use picture, especially in the classroom activity, we have some expectation that 
okay, today I'm going to teach the picture and then the material would be related to past continuous tense, right? And then I expect that my student would be able to create or to uh, formulate the sentence. For example, uh, she was uh, having fun with their friends. But unfortunately, what happened was that they did not really formulate the, the sentence uh, correctly or fully in past continuous tense. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they only said like, uh, she waits for someone or she uh, stands up uh, in the middle of the street, for example. So mm -hmm. how do we make sure that they do something that we want? Do, do you think that we need to actually give them one example of the sentence because if we give the example i'm afraid that uh, they do not find it by themselves but it's mm -hmm. the hook from us so what do you think about that Dr. yep yep uh thank you for the very good question i have two ways to answer your question number one i would find activity that allow multiple interpretation so there's no single answer if i show them a picture of a dog they would say dog that's it so easy but normally i will show them a picture of a shadow and they will guess. Um, so that's one thing. Um, so the first, um, the first thing I do is I don't. I, I, I would try to not expect the same answer. I would try not to ask a question or show a picture and expect them to say what I want. I show the picture, but I don't know the answer. Every picture I use, there's no answer. Yeah, make sure, make sure that there's no answer. And then the student will come up with different answers for me. That's one. Um, the second thing is suppose we want to teach a structure, for example, you should or there are, then I think it's good to model. For example, um, I will draw, for example, suppose I teach the word enough. Yeah, the structure, there is enough, there isn't enough, there, there is too enough. So I will draw a picture. I will draw a guitar with just three strings. We know guitar has six string, but I draw a picture with three string. And they say, mm -hmm. mm, what's wrong with this guitar? And they will try to say, they say, ah, uh, not uh, the string, not, uh, I say, not enough. I say, yeah, yeah, not enough. And then I will say, "You are you thirsty? And say, yeah, we're thirsty. And I show them a cup, a picture of a cup with very little water. What do you think about the water? They say, oh, not enough water. And they say, suppose you are in a room with three chairs and there are 20 of you. What do you think about chairs? Not enough chair. And then, and then I point at my watch and say, do you have enough time for your assignment? They say, no, no, we never have enough time. I said, what about friends? I said, oh, we have too many friends, too enough. And so I say, okay, let's practice. I will say what I have enough. And you will say what you have enough. I will say what I don't have enough. Like I don't have enough money. What about you? And they say, yeah, we too. We don't have enough money. And I will say a list of things. And they will say enough or not. I say time. They say not enough time. Trouble. Yes, enough trouble. Friend, too many friends. Enough friend. Money, never enough money. Yeah. So I model, but I open it. The modeling doesn't mean answering. The modeling, just one of the many options, you give one to inspire them and they will, they will answer. Another example is when I teach the grammar point of should or shouldn't. So I say, okay, let's, let's um, tell each other what we should and should not do. As a teacher, I think you should do your assignment. As a teacher, I think you shouldn't come late. What about me? They say, oh, as a student, we don't want you to teach a long lesson. We want short lesson. You should teach short lesson. Okay, my turn. You shouldn't complain. They say, our turn. We should complain when the exercise is too difficult. So we kind of laugh and joke around with should and shouldn't. Everything become a joke in the classroom so that people... People have a chance to enjoy the lesson. And, um, and again, I think um, if, if I require the same thing, like using the same structure, I would model. But the rule is every everything we do with picture, there's never one answer. There will be endless answers.
I see, I see. So we give the model, but they are free to express what they yes. know based on the picture. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Is it okay? One more question. Sure. Uh, sure. So, yeah, yeah sure. Do you, it's still related to the, the first question. So, do you think after we model the the answer and then they they have like varied answers, do we yeah. need to confirm, like for example, okay, based on your answers today, we actually would like to learn about this and the mm -hmm. correct pattern should be like this and this. Is it also yes. necessary, sir? Yes, it's called consolidation, and it, which is a very good step. After I think normally when students give me answer, I take notes so that mm. in the end I will acknowledge their effort so that they know that um, their contributions are valued and recognized by me. Sometimes I comment, I took note and I comment. For example, the picture I will use today about the two people talking, I will say, oh, some of you have very positive view about human relationship. You talk about these two people as ha sharing happiness, creating fun, yeah. But some of you are very um, pessimistic. You talk about these two people as fighting and hurting each other, sometimes too violent, yeah. So I kind of comment, I said, so in terms of idea, maybe we should be more positive, but in terms of um, language, you are excellent. So normally I would say something to for them to improve, but I would praise them, yeah. So in every lesson, there's always space for improvement, space for thinking, and space for language. A lesson is rich in objective. It's a social objective. It has an ethical objective. It has a ling linguistic objective. When, when your student respond to your picture activity, you will take notes. I normally divide my, uh, my notebook into three sections, yeah, like language. What do I have? To comment on language, what do I have to comment on idea, and what do I have comment on attitude? So in the end, when students finish the activity, I would comment and praise them for something good, and then point to the need for learning more, so that the activity is not just fun, but students are aware of that the activity brings joy, but also we need to learn something. Yeah. I thank you so much for the answer, Doctor. That was you're really welcome, my friend. Yes, yeah. yes thank you're you. very welcome. Thank you very much for the two critical questions from mm -hmm. Mr. Handu. Uh, mm -hmm. We still we still have some time to um, for the question and answer session. I think Buani has a question to be asked. Would you like to turn on the unmute yourself, Buani, or I should? Okay. Mute Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just um, regarding the drawing activity because not everyone can draw. I know that the main is not about the the drawing or the ability of drawing. But um, is there any reasons for um, using drawing instead of just taking? Because there are a lot of cartoon um, sketch there in internet. We can just find and download or or. Uh, or might be there is a re specific reason in terms of engagement. The mm -hmm. student can engage yep. more when they draw their own. There is a yep. confidence and, and sense of belongings or other specific reasons yep. that make them proud of or, mm -hmm. or uh, instead of just taking more, more pictures. Uh, yep. What do you think about uh, yeah, I think the drawing that's activity? That's yeah. yeah. Um, when he, that's an excellent uh, recommendation. I think I agree with you. And to summarize um, what you say and what we share today, uh, one, the reason, first reason why we choose to create picture of ourselves rather than taking photo, but drawing. First of all, it's relevant. We know exactly what the lesson is about. We know the detail, we know the content. So when we draw, we don't have to look so hard, but we keep drawing exactly what we want. So the relevant is the first reason. The second is, like we said, love and engagement. When students know that we draw for them, for that class, they know that we care about them. They, they know that this teacher wouldn't mind spending time and effort doing something out of love for them. And so they respond. Yeah. They will be, like you said, engagement. They will contribute. So reason number three is engagement. And reason number four is contribution. We give them a chance to to contribute. And, and the last reason, reason number five, is to shift the focus from teacher center to student center. If we show a picture and we tell 
Ashton to tell us about that picture is teacher center. They would they will use they will talk about the picture. They will focus on the picture that we give. But the shift to student center I mean they no longer focus on the picture we give. They focus on the picture that they they create and give us. So in doing that, uh, the purpose is not to draw a picture anymore, but in order to build a scenario to drawing in a group or individual, they think about language and they work with each other. So in that process, they discuss how to set up the story, how to present it. And the final outcome is just for fun when they share the picture and the story for the class to laugh is the bonus, is the outcome. But the purpose is not for fun. The purpose is during the discussion to build a picture and story, they talk in English, they interact, they justify, they argue, they compare, they create, they use vocabulary, they raise questions, they ask. So it's language practice. The process of building the story in picture is the whole process of language practice rather than picture focus. And, and the nature of that language practice is very student focused. So the last reason is uh, learner centeredness is, is the game. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much for the question, Guani, and also uh, Dr. Dat uh, to answer the question. Mm -hmm. So we still have one question here from the YouTube. Yes. I'm gonna read it for you. It's from Irfan Suryana. Hello, sir and everyone. It's incredible. It's incredibly am amazing to join this guest lecture. Thanks a million for the opportunity, knowledge, and, and insights. But I guess but Aisha hasn't sent the uh, questions yet. Maybe Aisha can help to uh, read the full questions to Dr. Dat. Mm -hmm. Sure. Oh, okay. So Aisha confirmed that it's not a um, question, but it's just an appreciation and a message from yeah. Irfan Suryana. So he would like to say thank you very much, especially to Dr. Dabao, because he thinks that it is a very incredibly amazing talk, especially talking about cartoons and pictures and everything. So thank you very much from Irfan Suryana to Dr. Dat. Mm, thank you very much, Suryana. And thank you, Ika, for yeah. reading. I really love to hear such um, words and I think um, if my talk is meaningful and usable, that will be wonderful. I will send to um, Bu, um, Buani and Ika the slides today so you can use um, for your students and maybe we can continue the conversation in the future. Yeah, sure. But actually, Dr. Dad, we still have one more question. Oh, I think yeah. audiences are very um, exciting to know yes, more about the topic. Sure. It's from, wow, actually it's not one question. Dr. Dad, we have two more questions. Okay. So the first one is from Muhammad Arifin. Mm -hmm. What should we do if the students mock us up because of our bad drawing? And oh. what should we do when students don't want to draw because they are too lazy or reluctant oh. to participate? Okay, yeah. Uh, the first question, right? I think... Between, I noticed from experience and observation, between teacher and student, I think over the time, I noticed students tend to be more willing to draw than teachers for some reason. I think um, according to psychology um, of education, yeah, educational psychology, people say we all born with the drawing talent or, or skills, but as we grow because we stop practicing, the artists in us kind of go away. And so between, um, I think perspective is one thing. I will tell you a story that happened in China when I went to China. Uh, when I was a student, I was asked by my teacher to join his team to write a textbook for China, for Guangdong province. So we were pay a lot of money by the um, Educational Bureau of Guangdong province to actually come there and research to see what people like, what people don't, how people learn, what their abilities are in order to write a textbook. The textbook is called Success with English. It was used in Guangdong province for four years. 
um, they stopped already because the management changed, but I still have the textbook with me. And I wrote it with my professors. Yeah, there was a team of five people, including me. And my role in that um, book was to create visuals for that book because they know I can draw. So my job is to create characters and uh, an English family, uh, a Chinese family, and a bunch of animals and also different characters to run through the book. So there are eight books, eight volumes, and these characters will lead through. It's like it's like TV series, you know, when you're addicted to character, you keep wanting to watch the series and we build the, uh, the textbook based on this psychology. If students and teachers like the characters, they will want to use the textbook more and more. And one of the characters that we put in the textbook is an alien. So I draw, I draw a bunch of alien to put in the textbook. And the reason, according to my professor, he wanted me to draw alien because he want language to be real. In the past, many textbooks teach um, object item in very unrealistic way. For example, showing picture of an apple and say, what is this? It's an apple. What is this? It's the pencil. Uh, he thought, my professor, he thought it was useless. It was meaningless. In real life, that will never happen. No one will show the, big, the pen up and say, what's this? And they say, it's a pen. Only mentally retarded people talk like this. No one. So he thought of a scenario when someone doesn't know a pencil. It must be alien. Someone from outer space coming to Earth and they know nothing about the Earth. So they look at a tree and they say, what is this? People will say it's a tree. So this is for role play, you know, when, when someone acting as an alien and someone acting as a human, having a conversation about object items around them is so exciting. Like, so alien will look at a chair and say, is this a house? No, no, it's a chair. You cannot live under this chair. And it's really fun. So after I draw this alien myself, we flew to China and we stayed there for two weeks. And we had a meeting with the management, the top leader of Guangdong Education. Yeah. And I showed them characters. I showed them English family with characters and a Chinese family and a bunch of animals. They love them. But the moment I show them a picture of aliens, they all look at each other and they look at me and say, no, no, no. We don't want alien in a textbook. We said, why? They said, students don't like aliens. Please remove the alien from the textbook, please. And so we said, okay, we respect your opinion, but can we also check with teacher and student to see if they accept aliens? Because we're still curious. We thought it's a great idea. And the management said, okay. So we had an, a meeting with teachers and we show alien to teacher, half the number of teacher, one third of them say, yeah, exciting. We want aliens. One third say, no, no, no. We don't want alien and student hate aliens not realistic. And one third said, we're not sure. We have to try it first. We don't know. So very mixed responses. The third step is I had meeting with students, but their primary school students cannot have meeting with them easily. So I had an interpreter with me. We visited five different schools and I went into 15 different classrooms. And what I did was I showed kids, I showed children pictures of the alien and picture of other character, I say, tell us which one you like. You can give one to five star. If you see a character and you don't like, don't raise your hand. If you like a little, one or two mean two star. If you like someone, five star. You can evaluate all of these characters, including the aliens. Can you guess how many stars they give to the alien? Four. Five stars, almost all students, four to five stars to the alien. They love alien. They want to see alien in the book. And the management said, no, no, we know students. We know they don't like. Only through research that we discover that, you know, the management was wrong. So we bring back this outcome. Fortunately, I had someone with me who, who, who translate and who, 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 who witnessed the responses from the children and we put it into a table, yeah, all the information. And we bring back and we had a meeting with the management and we told them, 
So we had very mixed feeling from the teacher, but when it comes to students, they all love the alien. What do you think? And the management was very confused. They couldn't say anything. They said, okay, you go out. We have a meeting now. We'll, br we'll bring you back later and give you our answer. So they kicked me out of the room and they had a long meeting for an hour, discussed how they deal with this alien issue. And when I step back into the room, can you guess what they say? Very, very interesting, the answer from, from the management. They said, we allow you to put the alien in the book on the condition that the alien must look like humans. The alien cannot look like alien. We call them alien, but they look like human. So after that, uh, when the book came out, the alien looked half human, half alien. And that was the book. And children still love this character. So the reason... Is I'm trying to say sometimes we we think our student will will hate drawing or we hate aliens or we hate certain way of doing things, but uh, we we might like to witness this first. So my suggestion is try first, but don't try to draw and give them. Sometimes try to invite them to draw, but we need to inspire them. If we say draw anything, maybe they won't be inspired. They have to like what we say first. We have to inspire them, yeah. And so my, my suggestion, number one, is be interesting as a person, as a teacher. Number two, inspire them, make them want to draw, not force them. If we say, draw now, they won't. But if they know we love them, they know they are interested, they will draw. Number three, they will draw. If they refuse, still refuse to draw, then we... We change method. We will use photograph. I have another talk for you in the future. The use of photographic resources, not cartoon anymore. So if you try um, cartoon and it doesn't work, maybe in the future we can use photos. But we leave it open. Yeah, I wouldn't judge. But from experience, um, I love to see it from perspective of our students. Also, children from different countries behave differently. A market research in English language textbooks show that in Germany, for example, they don't like cartoon so much in textbook. They feel if we put cartoon in textbook, uh, the textbook looks stupid. The textbook like undermine or underestimate adult intellectuality, intellectuality. So most of the time, English textbook in Germany look very boring. However, a research market in East Asia, China, Korea, Japan, they love funny, fun pictures. They love cute, little, fun, colorful, even stupid picture so that they can learn. Without them, they won't learn. And the psychology of, of people, including children in different countries, are vastly different. So um, my, my suggestion is um, to research, to know students in, in Georgia first, to see what they like, because I you are better than me because you know children there so well and I don't. I only know students in Australia and students in Australia like cartoon very much. So I'll leave that for you to find the answer. But I love to pursue that with you. Maybe we can do research together. Yeah, I hope it answers your question, yeah. Uh, yeah. Arifin. Yeah, thank you very much for your answer. Yeah. It's from Arifin. And yeah, related to that answer, Dr. Dad, I remember your suggestions in class. Dr. Dad reminds us that as a teacher, um, not only that we need to have pedagogy and linguistic skills, but there are three other skills that we need to master. The first mm -hmm. one is to draw, to be able to draw, like we talk about today. And yeah. second of all, we need to be able to sing. Mm -hmm. Even though probably mm -hmm. we think that our singing, our voice is mm -hmm. not that good, but just try first. And the last one is to act or to pretend. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the future, we can have more discussions regarding these two other yeah. topics that they've done yeah. together. Yeah. So it's maybe. really interesting. Maybe. Yeah. And also about... Um, your suggestions to do research. Maybe the reason why we already refuse to apply drawing first, mm -hmm. maybe because we were not exposed to that back then. But, mm -hmm. you know, like the teaching and learning has developed and we should try, especially in this uh, current world. So, yeah. Yeah, do research and understand. Uh, Thank you so much. 
Well, we still have one questions here. So sure. I would like to invite Teddy Prasetya to mm. unmute and to ask directly. Yeah, so hello, sir. hello, Mr. Yes. Mr. Teddy Prasetya. And my question is there someone who inspired you to use image media for learning or using cartoon to support your job? Because we all know there is another media like music, games, and another of it. And but you still use the image media to support your job. And honestly, I'm amazed because all your drawings are so cool, sir. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your question is, um, why why don't we think of consider also games between cartoon and games? Um, comparing, yeah. Is that what your question is? Yeah. yeah. And who uh, do you have uh, someone who inspired you to use the image media? Um, I think I think um, when I was a child, yeah, learning language and learning anything, I like drawing. So it first came from my life, you know. Um, the inspiration come from just the hobby, yeah. I love drawing, and I use drawing a lot with friends. When I explain something to a friend, I would draw a picture. I would draw a map, a chart, an image, um, and then it. It's in, in my hobby. So when I became a teacher, I keep that habit. One of the things um, I do a lot in the classroom is not is not drawing at home and bring. And the reason why I share with you is, is for convenience. But what I do a lot is I draw on the spot. You know, when I explain something, I will draw it on the board immediately. A map, a chart, a framework, um, a picture. So it has an Im immediate response from students. When they look at what you do, they can visualize um, understanding, can come in different ways, social, psychological, affective, linguistic, cognitive. And so when you draw, it tap into all of these ability, you know, um, the, the brain can contain um, devices in the brain that allow them to learn socially, emotionally, cognitively, psychologically, and linguistically. And drawing tap into these five, you know, when you draw, uh, artistically, it makes them happy because the picture looks fun. Um, cognitively, it just explains things so well. Like today, we're at, at, at the introduction of this talk, I show you five color image. Yeah. Then, and then you understand it quickly. Later, I show you words. I, I'm sure it's hard for you to read. So, cognitively, it's a shortcut when you draw a picture to explain a concept, it's a shortcut to explain it. Um, through explaining it in word, if you explain it in word, it's just too long. It takes too much time and effort and brain processing, uh, cognitive processing facility. So drawing a picture will cross over all of those dimensions. It makes people happier. It makes the brain work less. It makes memory stay longer. Um, and psychologically, it's personal. When you draw, instead of Instead of reading a passage and read to them like an academic, you teach a lot of academic concept. And so I can bring a book. I can I can cut um, a definition and I put it on a slide and I read it. It's not personal. When I read someone else's words, I read an author's word. It's not personal. It's very impersonal. But when I turn that understanding of that author into the way I understand it, I show my lens on the board. It's very personal. Students connect with me socially. They will ask questions and then I'll explain it in my own way. And they will add more features to the picture. The process of discussing an issue uh, in a conversation between students and me through the medium of ongoing drawing on the board is extremely social, psychological. When that happens, students connect with me immediately, easily. So, <clears throat> Get back to your question, what inspired me? Uh, Bloom Taxonomy inspired me. Yeah. When we read Bloom Taxonomy, <clears throat> we see these five mention. Bloom say, to teach successfully and learn successfully, we have to tap into these five, five dimensions of teaching and learning. Because some teachers just transfer knowledge and that's just one dimension, that's just cognitive dimension. But if you use all the five dimensions in the same activity, students will learn much better. So I think by drawing on the spot, I tap into these five dimensions. 
So what is by me is not art. What is by me is theoretical concept, which um, which is very much loom taxonomy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Teddy. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for your information and your You're answer. Welcome, Teddy. Yeah. Thank you very much for the wonderful question, Teddy, and also for the answer, Dr. Dad. Um, from the YouTube sections, the comment mm -hmm. section on YouTube, there is like one question from Irfan Suryana. It's technically not a question, but um, the website that you use to create or draw pictures. So maybe we can you can share to the audiences here so we can directly sure. practice it, yes. yeah, implement yes. it to our students. We we'll do that. Thank you. And yeah. Here Would you that. mind if we write, raise one more question, Dr. Dad? Sure, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> I can see the enthusiasm from the audience. So the Wonderful. question from the section, are there any standards or requirements to use pictures in the classroom? Uh, maybe it's about, can we use cartoons in all levels or only for young learners? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a very good question. I think um, there's more reluctance in participation in terms of drawing participation. There's more reluctance among adult learners, uh, especially very mature, like middle-aged people, older people. They they will refuse to draw. Yeah. Um, for those learners, if they're resistant, it's okay. It's perfectly fine. We can create situation. We don't. We don't create. Um, we don't provide. Uh, drawing of cartoons all the time. I think like um, like you mentioned, Ika, we, we might like to alternate between drawing pictures, drawing realistic picture, drawing fun cartoon, um, photograph, singing, music, drama, game, technology. We alternate. So um, although I focus on cartooning today, it doesn't mean we use cartoon every day, maybe once a month or unless students ask for it, you know. Some of my students actually, because I try, um, I bring a tool in today and then two weeks later, I bring in again and they just love it again. They don't get bored because I change the way I use it. And so um, the standard, yeah, it's hard to have a standard that work across culture and situation, but we might like to rope about for the responses. Um, I hope in the future, because I have, um, re I've researched into the use of music, the use of drama and also other things, the use of poetry. I use a lot of poetry in teaching. And I feel that my students won't be bored if I keep changing. So this week I use poetry. Next week I use acting. Um, we use a lot of acting in classes recently, a lot of acting. Um, another is um, games. And then songs next week in one of my classes i'm teaching them to write songs for education yeah so we'll do that uh and then drama acting so we keep changing so cartoon is just one of them but when it comes to any standard for cartoon i think the only thing is the five dimension that i mentioned at the earlier uh, part of the session today um there's no real standard when it comes to working um out visuals but back to your question at what age are people prone to drawing and i have to say which is consistently true that the younger the better young students love to draw but teenagers draw the most teenager i was teaching english in thailand after i graduated from university my first job was in thailand and my students love to draw the most they are 12 year old 12 to 15 years old just, student and they love drawing so much younger some of them draw some of them just doodle they don't really draw but teenager they're really talented adults can draw too and they like but again the group that don't like drawing is mature like 50 years old 60 years old 70 years old they normally hate drawing so with that group we have to use another approach but i think in our life as teachers we rarely teach 70 or 60 year old children, oh sorry, shouldn't say 60 year old children, people, 
And so cartoon will work more than less, you know. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Dad. So um, if I uh, get it correctly, so as a teacher, we need to also have the adaptability and also mm -hmm. the sensitivity to see the students' needs, um, mm -hmm. to see their potentials and also their interest in drawing. And it doesn't mean that we use this like monotonous approach all the time. So we can combine yeah. it with other approaches as well. Cool. Thank you very much. That's such a wonderful uh, explanation. Um, yeah, so before I give back the time to the MC uh, to close the sessions, maybe we should have not really a quiz because this is technically not a question from me, but I would like to hear reflections from the audiences here. So from maybe one audience, we would like to hear uh, your reflections, your um, ideas, your opinions, your perspectives about today's talk. And if you are interested to share, you can raise hand and yeah, we would like to listen to that. Maybe anyone can share about their feelings. Oh yeah, Mr. Patria. Okay, thank you, uh, Ika, and also Dr. Gadbau. I just would like to uh, say my gratitude uh, for this guest lectures, the, the seminar, because first when I read the title by using cartoon, I thought it would be like using Doraemon or SpongeBob or <laughs> any other cartoon that we can use yeah. to teach the student. Mm -hmm. But however, mm -hmm. there is some enlightenment that I get from this activity, especially because, you know, doctor, I also usually use pictures like what you had before, mm -hmm. the pictures of people uh, in one place so that uh, I need to, uh, I, you know, I told my students to guess what the pictures is about, but I never thought that, oh, I can draw my own pictures, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, this, what is that a seminar or this uh, lectures would give really enlightenment for all of the teachers here, especially those who uh, teach English for the students, for ESP students as well, that this activity would be very beneficial. And it could also improve our creativity in teaching. I would never thought, I would never think that uh, this kind of simple activity would be, you know, very beneficial. And we can even use one picture for several activities. So thank you so much. And also thank you so much for PBI Wade for holding this really wonderful experience in uh, the lectures activity. Thank you so much. You're most welcome, Pak Patria. Thank you so much too for your thoughts, beautiful thoughts. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Patria, for the thoughts. Um, yeah, I think I don't really need to like read very long conclusions and summary of the talk because we have heard from uh, Mr. Patria and also some of the audiences here. Seems like everyone got surprised, surprised, especially when they see uh, the content of these materials because we thought that yeah, simply take it from the internet sources. We don't need to like create it our own, but actually it's really important for us as a teacher to make it our own to make a sense to build a sense of uh, relevancy that dr dad has talked about i see one more uh, audience here raising hand uh, it's from tarik maybe he wants to uh, give some thoughts as well about the seminar so yeah time is yours Hello, Tariq, would you like to give some thoughts or? Yeah, I think maybe Tariq just uh, click it uh, by mistake, Dr. Dad, so we can yeah. continue to uh, the MC. But before that, I would like to highlight several principles of using cartoons uh, from today's talk. First of all is learnability, skills to be learned from the um, students obviously and also we need to have something that has um, that have multiple possibility so we don't need to make it clear for the students we can draw it like something abstract or maybe alien that Dr. Dad has just talked about and also meaningful content or context so it's not only to have fun or to entertain students but we need to have a clear goal either um, about the linguistics as to, uh, the linguistic skills of the students that we want to achieve or 
maybe about the moral lessons, because I remember Dr. Dad always re-asking us, like, what is the moral of the story, for example? And last of all is the emotional influence. So it's not, I think that it's not only about like happiness from the students, but other emotions as well. Maybe they can feel attached to like some sad stories or something that make them shock or heart attack, for example. Mm. Probably not that extreme, but yeah, we would love to see drawings that has um, emotional influence to the students. So thank you very much, Dr. Dad. Uh, we can have more talks in the future because that's exactly the feeling that I have every time I want to go to Dr. Dad's class, Dad's class or the seminar like this, even though I was taught by him last semester, but I'm always curious to learn more from Dr. Dad because there are a lot of things that we can learn from him. So yeah, thank you again, uh, Dr. Dad. Hope so we can uh, see each other again in the near future uh, in this kind of Definitely. like talk. Definitely, you're welcome and thank you for organizing it. Thank you, Buani, for inviting. Thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Dad. Oh, I experience with you. You. Okay, when will you be here for leave? For offline class. <laughs> for yeah. offline class then. Yeah. Yeah, but we said that you are going to be here with us. Uh, I love to come. I'm taking time off from Monash for half a year um, mm -hmm. just to do my research and there's a chance that um, we can we can talk more Okay. Okay. About Thank collaboration, you. and I might yeah. be when this COVID thing is um, less stress stressing. Uh, I love mm -hmm. to visit again. I've been there so many times, and I I miss it very much. Where they and the environment and life and the people are special. So uh, let's hope we meet again. Okay. Hopefully, we are all waiting here. Yes. Thank you. So. Bye bye and Thank see you in the near future. Um, no, not yet, Doctor uh, Dad. Oh, yeah, don't, leave, don't leave. Don't leave first. Don't <laughs> oh, leave yeah. first. Yeah, okay, okay, I'm okay. going to give sure. it back to the MC. So the MC is going to okay. close it, but I guess before okay, that, sure, have, sure. Yeah, some other stations. Yes. Um, sure, sure. Thank you very much, Doctor Dad. Hello, Aisha. No are you still there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, okay, so I leave it back to you. Thank you very much for the time, Aisha. Okay, thank you, Miss Ika and Dr. Dad. After, yeah. he after hearing all the interesting explanation from our speakers about how to use cartoon to be an interesting learning method in the classroom, there's a lot of new knowledge that we get and we didn't expect anything before, but it's really interesting for me itself and also really uh, inspiring for us who will be a teacher in the future. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again to Miss Ika and the, and the Dr. Dad as uh, about the material. Before we close the agenda, Dr. Ani as the head of English education will symbolically hand over a certificate to Dr. Dad and please mm -hmm. the operator maybe take the document documentation too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, on behalf of English Education Department of Universitas Ahmadalan and all participants joining in this lecture, I would like to express my gratitude to our honorable and favorite guest lectures, Dr. Dadbo from Monash University, Australia, to take out time from his busy schedule, I believe, to grace this event sharing about inspiring topic, especially on visual pedagogy for uh, teaching English. He's not only discuss about the topic, but uh, directly show how to use it and demonstrate to us. So we do learn a lot from your presentations. Thank you so much, Dr. You're Dad. most welcome, Dr. Ani. Thank you too. And to Ika, our lovely alumni, Ika Suciwati, thank you also so much for being very nice moderator. Wish you luck and success for your study in Monash. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the wish, Buani. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you also for everyone joining this event. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Miss Ani. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Miss Ani, for the warm speech. Ladies and, gentle and gentlemen, this is the end of our event today. But before we closing the event, let's take a picture for the documentation mm -hmm. session. Please make sure to open your camera and give your best smile. 
Mm. We'll take a picture all of the slides, so please be sure you're ready all the time. <laughs> I will count one, two, three for one slide. So please be ready. Okay. Is it ready, operator? Mm -hmm. Okay. For the slide one, one, <laughs> two, three, cheers. Okay. The slide two. Okay. One. Two, cheers. Okay, thank you. Another slide. Once again, one, two, cheers. <coughs> Once again, one more slide. Okay. One, two, cheers. Okay, thank you, everyone. And ladies and gentlemen, I am Aisyah Ril Surya representing all of the committees I would like to say thank you so much for your participation and let's close our event today by reciting Alhamdulillah together Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you Mr. Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you Thank you